like yeah as soon as other democrats started to parrot the words medicare for all i knew this was going to happen they were going to water it down take a phrase that people like and make it mean something totally different like oh you want medicare for all here's medicare for all plus extra access option right i mean this is not i mean this is the history of this country, right? The idea of health insurance for everybody is uh, 80 years old. And they haven't, the, the, the closest they've been able to come is the ACA, or I guess uh, the Medicare, at least in terms of, uh, but, you know, so, uh, you know, this is not, the idea that it was going to be, you know, um, that, that, that simply people talking about it a lot was going to bring it about, obviously not going to happen. It's going to be hard. Here is- um, I just have to say really- Sorry, just like 30 seconds. I just, as somebody who most of my adult life and has, you know, been around a lot of people who have, you know, lacked health coverage for various reasons. I mean, for the obvious reasons, for significant periods of time, you know, I I just always want to reinforce the sort of basic moral calculus of this too. And the real, you know, the reason at least I'm so uncompromising on it. I just think it's disgusting and grotesque and actually horrifying if you've been on the experiential end of it to have this even be a question and in play and of course what jamie's saying is also true of the green new deal and every other policy thing that has been sort of put forward by progressives and now has nice uh brands and good polling uh here is uh a uh, guy bakari sellers and he was the former South Carolina Democratic Party chair, if I'm not I thought mistaken. He was the mayor of uh, Atlanta. No. no? no. Oh, okay. And um, I've sat on a couple of panels with him. I've met him. He's a nice, uh, perfectly uh, nice guy. Um, but there is, seems to be right now, a big push on trying to draw down the expectations for health insurance as we enter into. Uh, this campaign. And it's interesting because in 2008, this went on, but it was very quick. It was very quick. And part of it was that some of the biggest advocacy groups that were looking for a Medicare for all um, very quickly settled on, okay, we're just going to ask for the public option, which is why it's, and that should be a cautionary tale, (laughs) right? Like, the negotiation ends when they start voting on the legislation. Do not pre-negotiate uh, the best case scenario away. Not even the best case scenario. Don't, don't pre-negotiate any scenarios away. But uh, so understand, that's what we're, we're in the midst of now. Like it has already, the, the fight for what the Democrats will do in 2021 has already Begun. Here is uh, Bakari uh, Sellers with um, with his argument. It is throughout this process, Democrats and their plans and their ideas and all of these proposals are going to be fleshed out and people are going to get to the root of it. But when what you saw this past week was you saw a slight difference of opinion because uh, I think that Medicare for all is the standard uh, in the Democratic Party now. But you have different ways and different candidates who want to get there. So I I still favor, for example, making sure that we still have a healthy private insurance industry in this country. But I do believe that we need to move towards a Medicare for all and let private insurance fill in those gaps. And I think that you have Kamala Harris and Cory Booker who have sponsored bills throughout the whole plethora or the whole genre of that, making sure that we get just and and if we just drop the age limit for Medicare uh, five years, I think we at least cover more people and we we can at least start to have those discussions. Now, it's I mean, it's such a weird frame. And this is why, like. I think making the idea of the existence of private insurance binary is problematic because it is unnecessary to say that there cannot exist any private insurance for there to be a functioning and uh, good Medicare for all. Well, they don't outlaw private insurance in companies with single payer. They just put them largely out of business. Well, exactly, which is exactly my point. So the point is, is like rather than die on the hill of whether private insurance should exist or not, that is secondary to what the affirmative thing that we want, which is cradle to grave access to Medicare by access. I mean, free 
free, paid for by payroll taxes. Okay? So um, a tax-based payment for health insurance cradle to grave. If you want to have um, supplemental insurance for uh, super wealthy people and they need that, by all means. I don't need, I can have a functioning um, uh, air industry that is available to everybody and still there can be people who have their own private jets. That doesn't bother me. I mean, I, the, the root cause of their ability to have private jets is something I'm going to tackle later. Just fair warning. We could shoot down private jets with surface-to-air <laughs> missiles but, but just the, for our own point. entertainment. That's the, that's Fly at your own risk, you fucking pricks. That's the thing. It's like, you know, don't argue that part of it. That well, may be a result, but that's not our worry. Well, it seemed like he was arguing to still include the private insurers in this universe. That's plan. exactly right. And the, the opportunity Which to do that, do. because, see, by saying, by making it a, um, a, by making it a, a just a pure uh, uh, binary choice, private insurance or no private insurance, that gives the opportunity for weasel words. Well, I look, I think private insurance has a role. Fine. But the problem is, is that once that becomes the argument, he's moving, he's moving the, the goalpost to like, well, private insurance actually, it's not necessarily a supplement, it's a compliment. They work hand in hand. Like, no, no, that can't, that doesn't function. This is the thing. That's the sleight of hand here. That does not work. It does not work. If you drop the age of Medicare by five years, you're still going to have a big problem um, you, because you're not going to have the same access to doctors. You're going to have an increasingly number of, of doctors who are like, well, you know, I'm just going to do a younger clientele on some level. And because they're not going to have the same... It's going to be an easier uh, group of people to service. I mean, that's the, that's the problem, is that um, you're going to have uh, essentially a two-tiered system, and w we don't want that. Yeah. There is no reason to include private insurance companies in the universal coverage plan besides as a handout to the private insurance companies. And then you have to look at where people's money is coming from. Uh,